We're going to continue in our sermon series, Thinking Like a Servant. And uh, we're going to be talking today about God is pleased when we obey Him wholeheartedly. There is five different steps in this. And if you have not heard this uh, sermon series we're preaching on, nor have you written it down, these are the five steps of what is a uh, we call a uh, thinking like a servant and you know uh, number one god is pleased when we love him supremely now how do you uh please god in uh hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 tells us that uh God is pleased. Uh, what would be the steps to pleasing God? Uh, we can't pray to Him unless uh, we know that He is God. He is able to do a, whatever we ask of Him to do. Uh, we don't tell God to do nothing. We ask Him because we are His children. We are His servants here upon this earth. So, how... In that verse, it tells us about God being pleased. Well, how do you please God? Noah found favor with God because uh, Noah pleased the Lord. In uh, Genesis chapter 6, how do we obtain the same thing? Many in the Bible had found that they had pleased the Lord. So how would you do this? Again, number one, God is pleased when we love Him supremely. What does that mean? We love him above all others. We just don't love him half the time. We don't just love him when we think about it once in a while. We just don't love it when somebody mentions God or mentions him. We do it as a daily practice, a daily habit. It just comes natural that we love him. Uh, and we put him above all even our spouses even the things that we love the most here upon the earth god reigns supreme over those as well i know it's probably easier said than done but that's what god wants out of us he loved us enough to give us his very best his son on calvary's cross a one-time deal i want you to know how powerful god is we talk about this, but we don't fathom the surface of this. Get underneath, underneath the surface and go into the depths of what we're saying. God put his son upon that cross and he died because he loved us. Not only uh, the Lord loved us, but the Father loved us. And he put him upon that cross to die. And he died for all mankind at one time i want you to fathom what i just said he died for all mankind at one time what does that mean that means there's no other god upon this earth not even satan that has that kind of authority to do that so god is pleased when we love him supremely Number two, God is pleased when we trust Him completely. Trusting people right now is so difficult to do because the art of deceiving is worldwide. It's global right now. People will deceive you to get what they want and nothing else. But God's not like that. God wants us to trust Him for our benefit not just his so number two God is pleased when we trust him completely number three God is pleased when we obey him wholeheartedly notice how Abraham obeyed God wholeheartedly when he had to sacrifice Isaac notice in the Bible in different times where people had to sacrifice whatever it was 
and God knew the hearts. God knew the hearts of Job. He knew the hearts of everybody, including us today. He knows how far we can go and how far we will obey Him. Number four, God is pleased when we praise Him and thank Him continually. And lastly, number five, God is pleased when we use our abilities. Whenever you use your talents, your abilities, you glorify God. Have you ever thought about that? That whatever you do, that God has given you that no one else can do but you. When you use these abilities He has given to you, when you use these talents He has given to you, you glorify Him. As Jesus glorified the Father when He was upon this earth, we glorify the Lord and glorify the Father, which was in Him. Now, here's the, uh, the meat. Get into the lesson. God is pleased when we obey Him wholeheartedly saving the animal population from a worldwide flood required great attention to logistics and details everything had to be done just as god prescribed it god didn't say build any old boat you'd like he gave very detailed instructions of the size, shape, and materials of the ark, as well as the different numbers of animals to be brought aboard. The Bible tells us Noah's response, thus did Noah according to all that God had commanded him, so did he. Genesis chapter 6 verse 22. Notice this. Again, thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. He didn't complain, he didn't murmur, he didn't gripe, he didn't gossip, he didn't do anything, he just did it. He, God said, told him to do something, he went out and did it. No questions asked. Notice that God obeyed, notice that Noah obeyed God continually completely no instructions was overlooked he obeyed exactly in every way and time God wanted it done this is wholeheartedness it was no wonder God was pleased with Noah if God should ask you to build a giant boat don't you think you might have a few questions objections or reservations no it didn't he obeyed God wholeheartedly this means doing whatever God asked without hesitation you don't procrastinate and say I'll pray about it You do it without delay. Every parent knows that delay, delayed obedience is really disobedience. God does not, God doesn't own, God doesn't owe you an explanation or a reason for everything he asks you to do. Understanding can wait. But obedience can't. Instant obedience will teach you more about God than a lifetime of Bible discussions. In fact, you will never understand some commandments until you obey them first. Obedience unlocks understanding. Notice that obedience unlocks understanding. Often we try to offer God part of obedience. We pick and choose the commandments as we pick and choose the commandments we obey. 
we we might or we make a list of those commandments we like and obey those well ignoring the ones that we think are unreasonable difficult and expensive or unpopular <clears throat> I'll attend church but I won't tithe I'll read my Bible but I won't forgive the person who hurt me yet part of partial obedience is disobedience wholehearted obedience is done joyfully with enthusiasm serving the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing Psalms 100 verse 2 teach me O Lord the way of thy statues and I shall keep it unto the end Psalms 119 verse 33 James speaks to the Christians he shall see how that one how that by the works of a man is justified and not just by faith alone James chapter 2 verse 24 God's word is clear that you can't earn your salvation it comes only by grace not for not your effort but as a child of God you can bring pleasure to your heavenly father through obedience any act of this any act of obedience is also an act of worship why is obedience so pleasing to God because it proves you are you really love him if you love me keep my commandments in other words obey what I tell you to do first Samuel chapter 9 verse 27 and as they were going down to the city to the end of the city Samuel said to Saul bid thy servant pass on before us and he passed on but stood thou but stood thou still a while that I may show thee the word of God getting uh, the word of God is important and in order to do that we have to stand still it's very difficult to do in this fast paced world to uh, rest stand still and wait upon God 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 17 through 23. And Samuel said, When thou waste little in thy own sight, waste thou not made in the, in the head of the tribes of Israel. And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee into thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners and the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the soil? And did this evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord has sent me, and have brought Agai, the king of Amet, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people... The notice is, but the people took the took of the spoils, sheep and ox, 
the chief of the things which should have utterly been destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord by thy God in Gilad. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as his great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hear, to hearken, than the fat of the rams. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is the as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord he has also rejected you from being king thee from being king notice that Samuel or Saul here when Saul was put under the counsel of uh, Samuel uh, the judgment of Samuel notice here that he tried to plea bargain and put it off on the people. Many times that we have, are examined or cross-examined, we put the light and shine the light on someone else. Someone else is to blame, but for our sins. Here, the people wasn't under the microscope, but uh, Saul was on account of what Saul didn't do. Saul did not use his authority over king. Okay, he might, he would say the people did it. Well, call the people out and punish the people for doing this. They were not supposed to do that. They acted up on their own authority against God's commandment. So they needed to be punished. But Saul didn't punish these people. So therefore, Saul had to endure the punishment on this. So he favored the people over God's commandment and therefore that was wrong for uh, Saul to do. <coughs> now, God is pleased when we praise him and thank him continually. That word continually doesn't mean just do it at the church. All right? That doesn't mean you just go to the house of worship and worship the Lord and about an hour or two on Sunday morning and that's it. How would you like to be in church services more than just two hours a day? We have churches set up that, you know, you just go in there for two hours a day and that's it. How what would happen if you had to eat just two, two uh, meal one week? When God set all this up, he set all this up that we might do it continually. Paul and Silas was not in church at midnight in Acts chapter 16. They were in prison and they were praising and thanking God there. As family, we ought to come together and praise and thank God continually. Uh, Brother Greg, he used to uh, have this book, and every Sunday night, he'd open it up, and he'd read the pages of things, how the uh, the songs come about. I really enjoyed that, the way he did that. And uh, he took upon himself to do it. And he opened it up one time, and he read about this man. He would go to church on Sunday morning or Sunday night, he would hear the message and they'd come home and they'd gather, the family would gather around the piano and he would, they would uh, make a song out of the sermon and they would sing it. And the, uh, how uh, that, that inspired me to think about stuff like that. Uh, Pleasing God is something an individual can do 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Families need to do. 
and churches even need to do this. We all need to come together and praise God. And uh, thank Him continually. We're entering into a Thanksgiving season. And I've often wondered how many people are thankful for the Lord and what He's done. One of the things that I've hated was this uh, Good Friday or Black Friday sale thing. It has creeped into Thanksgiving Day. And, you know, you spend time with the family. About eight or 5 o'clock, the stores open. And everybody does start doing the Christmas shopping. The book of Ecclesiastics teaches me there's a time and a place for everything under the sun. On Thanksgiving Day, that is the day that we need to be thankful. We set aside. This is the only nation that has done this. There is no other nation that set Thanksgiving Day aside to be praise the Lord. But when the world comes in and says, well, I'll tell you what. You can praise God until 3 o'clock or until 5 o'clock. Then, other, other, then you know, I want you to go out and spend the money. The God of money now has taken over our minds and our hearts. And that's all we're consumed by. And that's not pleasing to God. God wants us to please Him by praising Him and thanking Him as often as we can and as much as we can. In saying that, few things feel better than receiving heartfelt praise and a, an application from someone else. God loves it too. He is pleased when we express our adoration and gratitude for Him and to Him. Noah's life brought pleasure to to God because his life because he lived with a heart of praise and thanksgiving that's the problem with us today do we live every day with a heart of praise and thanksgiving to what he has done for us Noah's first act after surviving the flood was to express his thanks to God by offering a sacrifice. Genesis chapter 8 verse 20. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast of and of a, every clean fowl and offering and offered burnt offering on the altar because of Jesus sacrifice we don't offer animals set animal sacrifices as Noah did instead we are told to offer God in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15 by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Now what are we supposed to offer? The sacrifice of praise. To God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. Psalm chapter uh, 116 verse 17. And I will offer thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And will call upon the name of of the Lord. Psalm chapter 69 verses 30 and 31 I will praise the name of, the, of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than ox or bullock or that the horns of hoofs and hoofs. The amazing thing happens when we offer praise and thanksgiving to God. When we give God enjoyment, our hearts are full of joy. 
Now notice that our hearts are full of joy. They increased our joy. They also increased our joy. In other words, our hearts are full of joy unspeakable and full of glory. Psalms 68 verse uh, 3 But let us but let the righteous be glad. Let them that rejoice before God yea let them exceedingly jo rejoice. Again but let the righteous be glad. We have something to be glad about. We have someone to be glad about. Someone outside the worldly system. Let the world be miserable and uh, go on in despair and without hope and everything. But we be glad in front of the people. Let them rejoice before the Lord, before God. Let us rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Why? Because we have something to be thankful for. Something to praise. We have someone to praise in who has conquered death, hell, and the grave. Who has conquered everything. And we can rejoice in Him that through Him we might do it also.